The Alfred Jewell in the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford has been one of the stars of that remarkable eclectic collection since the early 18th century. It is an object that has always drawn me in when I have visited the museum. Dating from the 9th century, the jewel is a beautiful, mysterious and rather enigmatic object that takes us back to the very heart of life in Anglo-Saxon England. Measuring two and a half inches in length, the jewel is made of gold, decorated with characteristic Anglo-Saxon granulated decoration and set with a large polished rock crystal which may have been recycled from a Roman object. This transparent crystal protects beneath it a panel of cloacene enamel, which has a depiction of a king holding two sceptres. Now, in the past, this figure has been interpreted as an image of St Cuthbert, and is often interpreted these days as an image of Christ in majesty, as it bears comparison with other images of that sort from the period. But more recently, it has been suggested that this is a representation of the human sense of sight, and comparisons have been made between this image and that on the 9th century fuller brooch in the British Museum, an object that shows all five human senses with an image of sight in the very centre. The jewel tapers down to the bottom and it terminates in a lovely little animal's head. This forms a socket or ferrule to receive something that is now missing, either a thin rod of wood or ivory or, or other organic material that has long since decayed. When you turn the jewel over, you realise that the enamelled panel is on a gold back plate that is part of the fixing or the setting of the rock crystal. The back of this plate is decorated with engraved foliage, stylized acanthus. It may represent a tree of life, though sometimes such decoration is purely decorative and not necessarily symbolic. Around the sides of the crystal, there is a rim that holds the crystal in place, and on this is an inscription in open work, which reads in Old English, Alfred Meg Hext Ye Wuachan, Alfred Ordered Me Made. Given this inscription and the quality of the piece, who else could Alfred be than King Alfred the Great, King of the West Saxons, who ruled Wessex from 871 to 899, was Bretwalder, the High King of the Anglo-Saxons, and defended his realm against the Viking incursions of the 9th century. This is a high-status piece, and many aspects of this work, the enamel, the engraving, the lettering, show distinct Carolingian or Byzantine influence which should not be too surprising in Anglo-Saxon England. Alfred and other Anglo-Saxon kings were enamoured with Charlemagne and saw in the Carolingians a model of kingship to emulate. The location of this jewel's discovery lends itself to the idea that it was Alfred the Great who was the patron of this remarkable object. It was discovered in 1693 in the Somerset Levels, the very heartland of Saxon Wessex. It was found in a field within an area of parkland surrounding a country house called Newton or Petherton Park to the east of North Petherton. The find location is tantalisingly close, only four or five miles away from one of the centres of royal power in Wessex, Athelney. Athelney, set on a series of islands above the Somerset levels, was a naturally defensible retreat for the royal family of Wessex in times of war and of need. Still to this day, when the levels flood, Athelney still sticks up above the flood waters. This monument marks its location. It was to Athelney in 878 that Alfred retreated after his defeat by the great Viking army, and it was from here that he regrouped, he beat the Vikings at the Battle of Eddington and increased his hold on his kingdom. It was also at Athelney that the story about Alfred burning the cakes is supposedly set. You all know the story. Alfred, exhausted from his war with the Vikings, takes shelter in a house where the housewife asks him to watch her cakes cooking in the fire as she steps out for a minute. He falls fast asleep and the cakes are burnt. Ten years later, having dealt with the Vikings when all was settled and he had been declared Bretwalder, the High King of the Anglo-Saxons, Alfred founded a royal monastery at Athelney dedicated to Christ, St Peter, St Paul and his saintly predecessor, St Egelwine. 
Now, monasteries were constructed by Anglo-Saxon kings for a number of purposes, and one of them was to act as repositories of knowledge and of memory for the kingdom, as places of education and learning. We know that King Alfred was a man of letters, and that after the Battle of Eddington, when peace came, he dedicated much of his reign to improving the education of his people. In so doing, he was also emulating the Carolingians, who initiated in Europe an educational renaissance too. We know that Alfred invited scholars from the continent to his court, and he ordered translations of important texts from Latin into Old English, and that these were then distributed to monasteries within his kingdom. Without question, Athelney Abbey would have benefited directly from such gifts from King Alfred and would have become a sort of educational hub. It is known too that often manuscripts would be sent out along with practical objects called astals, which were pointers used when reading texts aloud. And it seems quite likely that the Alfred jewel is such an astal, and that the socket in the animal's head at the base of the jewel is a fixing for a pointer. You have to remember that even monastic libraries would have had very few texts, as manuscripts were expensive and time-consuming to produce. Even the richest abbeys in this period may only have had a dozen or maybe two dozen books. The reading aloud of texts was therefore the primary way that the knowledge contained within books was transmitted. Of course, in the liturgy and the offices of a monastery, a monastic round of prayer, texts were also read and sung aloud. Why were astals needed? Well, quite simply for practical reasons. Churches and monasteries, particularly Anglo-Saxon ones, were not well lit. Windows were small and few, spaces were lit by dim candles and lamps, and people did not have the benefit of spectacles. Astals were a vital piece of equipment as they enabled a reader to follow a line and not lose his place when reading in dimly lit conditions. The Alfred Jewel is a kingly gift and would have been a conspicuous example of an object that would have been well used within a monastic context. Other Anglo-Saxon astals have been found and they are often richly decorated too. Among them are the Bowley's Jewel, now in the British Museum, the Minster Lovell Jewel, which like the Alfred Jewel, is in the Ashmolean, and the Warminster Jewel in the Salisbury Museum. All three are similar in some respects to the Alfred Jewel, though not quite as lavish. The Bowley's Jewel, once believed to have been found in 1985 at Bowley's Cove in Dorset, and now believed to actually come from Knowlton much further inland, is made of gold and is set with a blue glass jewel and is decorated with beaded wire and the usual granulation that you see too on the Alfred jewel. Each granule of that decoration is soldered on individually. It too has a fitting or socket for a pointer. The Minster Lovell Jewel has a little more in common stylistically with the Alfred Jewel. It has been suggested that it may even have been made in the same workshop. There is the same granulation, decoration and of course enamel. Minster Lovell in Oxfordshire where the jewel was found sometime in the late 17th or early 18th century was probably the site of a Mercian royal vill and of a royal minster. The church there is still dedicated to St Kenelm, the son of King Kenwilf of Mercia. The Warminster Jewel in the Salisbury Museum was found by a metal detectorist in 1997. It is made of rock crystal set in a granulated gold wire frame, and at the centre there is a lapis lazuli cabochon, a beautiful dark blue polished stone. It doesn't seem much of a leap to me to suggest that the Alfred Jewel might have been sent out with an important manuscript by King Alfred to his royal monastery at Athelney and was used there. How it ended up in a field four miles away is anyone's guess. It might have been stolen at any point in its long history and lost as the thief escaped. The Benedictine monastery in Athelney survived until 1540 when it was dissolved during the dissolution of the monasteries. Was the jewel removed and lost at that point? Quite possibly, but we'll never know. 
After its discovery in 1693 in the field at Petherton, the jewel was taken into the collection of Colonel Nathaniel Palmer of Fairfield House in Stagursey in the Quantocks. It was Palmer's son Thomas who gave the jewel to the Ashmolean in Oxford in 1718. What an extraordinary object the Alfred jewel is. A chance find, but one that gives a very rare insight into the very colourful world of Anglo-Saxon England and of the quality of court art produced in the 9th century. But it is an object that ultimately begs more questions than can be adequately answered. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy this channel, you're bound to enjoy my magazine, The Antiquary. Published every month, it is a labour of love for me, and in it I explore some of the more obscure aspects of our shared history, all beautifully illustrated in full colour. It chips across the world, is offered in print and digital format, and readers give it five stars on Google. If you love your history like me, particularly the history of objects, buildings, people and places, why not consider subscribing? Subscribing helps support my work and the channel too. There's a link above and in the video description that takes you to the magazine website.